In this lesson, you will learn the basics of writing aims and objectives. This video will not replace face-to-face -face support, and you should review what you have learned with an experienced colleague or teacher trainer. So in your lesson, you're going to have at least one student. And I want you to imagine that getting to the end of your lesson is like crossing a big river. The end of your lesson, the other side, is the goal. This is what you hope the students will have learned by the end. This goal is called the aim. In order for the students to reach the goal, they will need stepping stones to get across the river. These stepping stones are called the objectives. So what are aims and objectives? Well, An aim is a broad idea of what you hope to achieve by the end of the lesson. And the objectives are the steps students will take to achieve the aim. One of the most important things about writing objectives is that they must be measurable. We will be looking at this later. So let's have a look at an example. If we're doing a lesson on the human bones, you might set your aim to be to know the bones of the human body. This is not very specific and needs breaking into manageable chunks. Remember, an aim is only a broad outline. So our first objective could be to identify at least three different bones. This is much more specific and is the first stepping stone of the lesson. Seeing as how we are writing these specific objectives, you might ask, do we really need a name? The answer is yes. Without a name, you have no direction for your objectives. Therefore, you should decide on the aim of your lesson before writing the objectives. So now you might be wondering how important objectives are. Well, objectives are the most important part of lesson planning. They help to keep the lesson on track and also make sure that learning is broken down for the students. Objectives are written on both the scheme of work and the lesson plan. Objectives also help to keep your students happy. Not knowing what to expect from a lesson can make students lose interest. Students can easily switch off if they feel there is no plan to the lesson. Showing the objectives to the students lets them know what they will be learning and this puts them at ease. It is very important to get your objectives right. The objectives need to be something that you understand and is useful to you. But it also needs to be something that another teacher could understand if they're going to cover your lesson. But don't forget we're going to be showing these to our students and if the language is too complicated, they could get very confused. Therefore, they also need to be something that the students can understand. And so you may even need to reword them before putting them on the board for your students. In order to make sure our learning objectives are going to work, we need to do a SMART test on them. You basically need to check that your objectives are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time related. So let's look at making a specific objective. If our aim was to learn about trees, we might write an objective which says students will do a test. Do a test is not specific and another tutor covering your lesson wouldn't know what the test was supposed to be about. It is also something students will do, not what they will be learning. It is important that your objectives deal with learning. So we could change this to students will describe the process involved in photosynthesis. This is much clearer and also shows what you expect the student to learn. It is extremely important that your objectives are measurable. This means that you can actually carry out some form of assessment to check that your objectives have been met. If your aim was to learn about money, you might write the objective students will understand why we have money. But we have no way to test whether a student has understood something. You could ask them, and even though they say they have, they haven't. So we could change this to students will give at least one reason for money. This is measured by default as each student will give a reason, and you can check that it is correct. Next, we need to make our objectives achievable. If we were trying to teach students how to write an essay, we could say that students will write a 3,000 word essay. This definitely would help them to learn how to write an essay, but it's like climbing a mountain in one go. Mountain climbers always plan their ascent in stages, so we need to plan the writing of the essay in stages as well. So instead of saying write 3,000 words, 
we could get the students to write a paragraph of an essay. Now we need to make sure our objectives are relevant. If we are trying to teach students how to fix a car radiator, we might say students will learn how to change brake fluid. Even though this is related to fixing a car, it has nothing to do with the radiator and so is irrelevant. So instead, we could say that students will learn how to safely fill the radiator with water. Finally, we need to make sure our objectives are time related. We do this by saying, by the end of the session, students will. Most of the exact timings are dealt with in the lesson plan, and you will learn about this later in the course. So let's have a look at the type of words you should and shouldn't be using. Words like understand, know, feel, appreciate, show an awareness of, and students will learn, are not good in objectives. This is because they are not measurable. If you take understand, for example, students would need to do something else to show that they have understood. It is that thing that they do that you need to be writing in your objectives. Therefore, you should be using words like define, demonstrate, identify, create, state, and list. Each of these are tangible things that you can get students to do and can be measured. So let's have a look at an example of an aim and objective from a theory lesson. Our aim might be to assess the best exercise for weight loss. When writing the objectives, you might find it helpful to write by the end of the session, all students will. You don't have to repeat it if you write it how it looks here, but this starts every single one of your objectives. Now our first objective is to get students to identify different cardio exercises. Can you see how we are asking some to do more than others? This is called differentiation. You'll be learning about this later in the course. Our next objective is to get them to decide which cardio exercise is better. You can see how we are gradually progressing towards the aim. Now let's look at the aim and objective for a practical lesson. Our aim is to begin a 30 second promotional video. Our first objective is to create a storyboard for the video. Then the students will film at least two of the scenes for the video. And finally, they need to import the footage and trim the start and end points. Notice how it doesn't say by the end of the session students will. This is the way to write objectives when you are more confident. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to write aims and objectives. Please watch this video as many times as you need and discuss any of the content with your peers.